Everyone knows the struggle of working with YouTube's compression. You work hard for hours and hours on a video, putting in tons of effort to make it look as best as can be, but when it comes time to finally upload it to YouTube, it looks awful. If you clicked on this video, you've probably experienced this horrendous compression and looking for a way to counteract it or outright get rid of it. And while we can't outright get rid of it, there are ways to counteract it and retain video quality when you upload to YouTube. And I'm just going to tell you straight away, the answer is grain. Now you may be thinking, you're some random chump on the internet who's telling me to add grain to my videos. When you think about grain, you probably think about darkness when your camera tries to brighten up the scene and there's quote unquote grain in the shadows. That's not actually grain. The technical term for it is actually called noise. And noise takes away detail, texture, and color information from your image, but grain is different. Grain is a natural attribute of film, which is an analog process that adds texture and more detail into the image. And yes, it is grain, it's gonna jump around and it's gonna add something to the image. But from my research, that's exactly what we need in order to counteract YouTube's compression. Allow me to explain. Essentially, YouTube's compression is actually MP4 compression with a few extra steps. MP4 is kind of the standard for sharing videos nowadays and regardless of what format you upload the video to YouTube in, it's going to be re-encoded as an MP4 video. Furthermore, when a video is encoded in the MP4 format, compression is applied to it. Now, the level of compression technically does depend on both the format and the codec. The most common codec that is used by consumer cameras is H.264. This camera shoots H.265 because it is producing a 10-bit image. And all of that is great, and you could have cameras that shoot raw video. You're gonna have MP MOV, MP4, Cinema DNG, whatever you want to have it all gets turned to mp4 once you put it on YouTube. So let's talk about why adding green is actually going to help you rather than hinder you when you upload your videos to YouTube. The mp4 format actually relies on motion in order to compress video. Behind me we have shadows and highlights, but it is static. If a video is static and there are parts of the image that are seen as unmoving, like for example if you're shooting and there's the sky, and even though the shot may be moving, the sky doesn't move exactly relative to the shot because of perhaps the camera angle, it's going to compress the areas that are unmoving more so than the areas that are moving. Because of that, areas that have less detail are seen as either unmoving or just not having enough detail to make the compression skip that area. If an area lacks detail, it's going to get compressed and therefore adding grain actually is going to add detail and motion to areas that don't have it. So here's how I go about adding grain to my footage. I use a software called DaVinci Resolve Studio in order to edit my videos. It is a paid software, but there is a free version as well. And if you have the money, I do highly recommend paying for the software. Within the software, there is an effect called film grain. Plain and simple, you just add it to your footage. If you have the studio paid version of DaVinci Resolve, you can access the film grain tool within the color tab. If you've never used DaVinci Resolve before, it operates on a node system. Each node essentially acts like its own layer, and the best way to apply the grain is either to put it in the first node, which is going to look the most natural because it's being applied directly to the footage, as if it were having grain straight out of camera, or to apply it to the last node, which doesn't exactly look as natural, but it might look better on YouTube. I personally prefer to put the grain in the first node, but it doesn't ultimately matter unless you're trying to authentically emulate film. In order to do this, I simply search in the tab for the film grain effect, click it, drag it, and drop it onto my first node or last node, depending on what I feel like doing. The settings I like to use within the film grain node are going to be based off of the 16mm 500T preset. I'm going to go a little more into detail later on what my personal settings for the actual sizing and other advanced things for the grain are, but now let's talk about how to use the film grain effect in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. The free version doesn't allow you to use it in the color tab, but you actually are able to use it in the fusion tab, which is a more VFX based area of DaVinci Resolve, but you should be able to use the effect 
in the Fusion tab. If you've never used Fusion before, don't worry, this is going to be very simple. You click on your clip that you want to apply the grain to, then go into the Fusion tab and do shift, space, and then type in film grain. That's how you search for different effects, and you click on the effect and add it to the node tree. It should hopefully by default drop right into the line, which connects the media in to the media out, but if it doesn't connect, all you have to do is click, hold, shift, and then drop it in. That should have connected it all up. Now you have the film grain effect applied to the footage through Fusion, and the great thing about Fusion is that it's automatically going to cache the playback for you so it'll play back smoother because sometimes the film grade effect can be quite intensive on your system. From there, you should be able to adjust the settings just the same as the color tab, just the interface is slightly different. And if for some strange reason they changed the availability of the film grain for the free version, I don't have the free version anymore so I can't really check, but I do remember it being free in Fusion. You can always get a film grain overlay from online and apply it to your footage with an overlay blending mode. However, you're not going to have as much control over how it looks, but it's better than nothing. And if you're not using DaVinci Resolve, you're probably just going to have to get an overlay. Now, as far as customizing the effect goes, I have done some research over the past week um, with a clip that got hit rather hard by YouTube's compression on one of my latest videos. It was a drone shot in my final drone montage of the series, and they had some shadow area, and I could see on YouTube that the shadow area of the clip was highly compressed. And if I actually pull that compressed clip back into DaVinci Resolve and boost the shadows a little bit, we're going to see what's going on. It looks atrocious. It looks absolutely horrendous. So this clip is the clip that I've been trying to fix. I've done multiple tests running small grain size, large grain size, grain strength, all different sorts of tests, and each test I exported as a single video and uploaded to an unlisted YouTube playlist. In each video in the playlist, I have left the settings that I used for each grain effect and put it into the description of that video. So now you can go into the description of this video and click on the link to the playlist, which will take you there, and you'll be able to click and watch each video and see what settings you like the most. I have ones with more grain if you're fine with having more grain in the image, less grain, minimal amount of grain, and just kind of things in between, just trying to experiment with what will look the best. And then you can take those exact settings and plug them in to the film grain node. All I do ask in return for me doing this research for you is that you subscribe and like the video. It's much appreciated and it helps me out a ton. Now from there, you just wanna make sure you export your video in 4K because 4K videos are compressed less on YouTube than 1080p videos. Even if you didn't shoot in 4K, I would still recommend exporting in 4K because it really, really helps a lot or 8K, whatever, do whatever you want. Export an 8K, why not? If this video was helpful for you, it would be much appreciated if you could drop a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on. I have a lot more DaVinci Resolve tutorials coming up soon, including a drone video editing tutorial coming next week. I really hope you guys tune in for that, and I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Rocco Germani, and I will see you all in the next video. Here's to having less compressed videos. Peace. <laughs>